So the first question that we're going to ask you about relates to your international development work. And I wanted you to explain a little bit about the Millennium Development Goals, please. Well, the Millennium Development Goals are a wonderful uh, bumper sticker, if you like, because they are an aspiration to do something about the huge discrepancies of opportunity and wealth which exist around the world. So there are eight of them, and they deal with health and education and opportunity issues in the developing world. And uh, to get everyone in the United Nations, all the great nations of the world, to focus on eight sets of indicators is really, really important. Um, we're halfway through. 2015 is when these goals need to be met. And the truth today is that we are massively off course. The uh, goals will probably be met in Asia but they won't be met in most of Africa. And indeed, some countries in Africa are actually going backwards, not forwards. So in terms of getting everyone to point in the same direction, they're great. In terms of whether they're going to be achieved, the uh, results are patchy at best. And what the Conservative Party says we require is annual evaluations and audits of how we're getting on with the Millennium Development Goals. Because if you can see who's going forward and who's going backwards, you can first of all try and uh, intensify the efforts that are being successful, but you can also focus on the areas which are not successful. And one of the things that we'll be doing uh, is to try and harness the Commonwealth, which is an organisation of which Britain takes a leading part, one of the leading players in the Commonwealth, to try and make sure that other Commonwealth countries who are not doing as well on the Millennium Development Goals as, as, as we would wish should be given extra help and support uh, in tackling them. So that's the Millennium Development Goals, that's our approach and that's where we are on the goals at the moment. Great. Um, well given the kind of current economic um, crisis, you know everyone is struggling and developing countries are going to start um, struggling even more. How can we ensure that our commitments to developing countries are continued? You know, you've talked about your personal aim to get 0.7% of GDP spent on aid. How can we ensure that this continues? Well, it's not my personal oh, okay. uh, uh, pledge, although it certainly is something which I believe in very strongly. It is the pledge of my party and all the parties in Britain that we will reach the 0.7% of gross national income spent on development. And uh, that is uh, our commitment. Um, the time to reaffirm these commitments is a time when things are tough, as they are at the moment, uh, partly because of the world uh, uh, trends in the economy and partly because Labour has made such a mess of our economy. Uh, but it's a time, I think, when one needs to reaffirm one's moral commitment, which, which I happily do and uh, we as a party do. Um, I think it's also important to make the point that in the four years that I've been doing this job, I've discovered that money in many ways is the least important aspect of the three key areas of development. Uh, and it's undoubtedly something which makes development work, which is more important than money, and there's something which damages development more than a lack of money. And the thing that makes development work is uh, economic growth and development uh, and the growth of the private sector. And if you want the proof of this, look at what India and China have done. I mean, they have lifted hundreds of millions of their citizens out of poverty because they're part of the international trading system. They're making things that people want to buy and sell. And uh, they're producing thing, goods and services which are wanted around the world. And, and, and that is an important lesson that we've all learnt in recent years because it wasn't so long ago that a British NGO could put up a poster saying that free trade was slavery, whereas now everyone appreciates that promoting free trade, free and fair trade, uh, promoting the private sector, promoting economic development is absolutely key. The thing that damages development uh, even more than a lack of money is conflict. And if you live in conflict, if you live in a camp in Darfur tonight, it doesn't matter how much access to aid or to trade and private development you've got, you're going to remain poor and miserable and angry and uh, 
upset until the conflict is over. So in the end, it is bearing down on conflict, preventing conflict starting, once it's started, stopping it, and once it's over, reconciling people, that is really important in uh, tackling the issues around development. Um, having said that about a, a pri the private sector and the importance of economic development and about conflict, money too is very important. and. Uh, have, making sure that we stand by our moral obligation to hit 0.7% is important. Trying to get, uh, make sure that our money is spent in the right countries, because actually we have an aid programme in nearly 120 countries, uh, to a greater or lesser extent, and a, and a, and a substantial aid programme in 67 countries, and some of those maybe we should look again at. Um, and the other thing, of course, is to make sure that other developed countries uh, stand by their promises. Uh, Italy and France, having signed up to the Glen Eagles agreement on spending on aid, um, has uh, not done what they promised. It's very hard to say to developing countries, you know, you must do what you say. If they have the very bad example of uh, EU countries signing up to things and not then doing what they've said. And finally, I think we need to see some of these oil-rich states, particularly in the Middle East, doing more to help with development elsewhere, particularly in the neighbouring continent of Africa. Great. Well, you give us some really interesting ideas there. Um, you said last week that you want less hot air and more action. Mm. So I want to ask you about what you would do. You know, if you were to get into power tomorrow, what are the three sort of priorities that you would have regarding aid and development? Well, um, I would have many um, priorities, but in respect of the point I was making about the Millennium Development Goals, less hot air and more action. Uh, we would, first of all, want to introduce this system of, of evaluation uh, uh, targets and, um, as it were, checks on how we're getting on um, every year between now and 2015. There's another seven years to go. So we would want to try and make sure that we checked each year how it was going and published the results so people can see which countries are going backwards and which countries are going forwards. They can look at best practice, which is driving countries forwards, and look at the reasons why some countries are going backwards. And that's also a way of helping people to hold their politicians locally to account. Very, very important. Part of state building is not only to have laws of contract and property rights so that you can have a private sector, which is, which is pivotal, really. It's also uh, trying to make sure that you have the sinews of civic society to hold leaders and politicians to account. Um, and uh, part of that, I think, is seeing how the Millennium Development Goals um, are going. Uh, the other thing I think I would do fairly quickly is to try and see what we could do to get more support from some of the oil-rich countries, particularly in the Middle East. I think that would be worth quite a lot of effort. And of course, making sure that we persuade other rich nations who are committed to supporting the undoubtedly necessary increase of funds, trying to make sure that they too step up to what they've said they will do and meet their commitments. So there's three areas that you that you mentioned, which uh, you asked me about three areas to do with the MDGs. Those would be three quite good ones, I think. Great.